Good afternoon. This video I want to show uh, again J uh, Jack Smack's 77 Lies about uh, Louis Berry Schaefer and uh, the fact that, uh, and this is his repentance. And he's going to quote uh, Schaefer on some issues. But here's uh, about repentance. But here's what he says here in his book on uh, faith alone. Uh, we need uh, talking about the. Uh, John, he goes here, John never added repentance in, uh, in any form to any of the gospel verses. Romans and Galatians are revisions of the gospel message in part for the churches of Rome and Galatia. Revisions of the gospel. They need revision due to the rampant plague of Judaization, and the word repent is not found in Galatians at all either. So he can't, he doesn't, he can't figure out what to do in Romans. We, need, we do not make a big fuss at, at, war, at, at to what uh, we need to not make a big fuss as to what repent means in a syllabic sense because it's not part of salvation. Chaffin didn't teach that. Chaffin didn't teach that. Faith, belief, belief, slash belief in Christ is all one has to do in order to be saved. That is the pure on, 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 on alloyed gospel. Here's what Chaffin taught about that in his uh, systematic theology. To the relation repentance to believing. Too often one is asserted as is here, that repentance is not repentance is not to be added to belief as a separate requirement for salvation. It is assumed that by so much by so much the, the claim has been set up that repentance is not necessary for salvation. Therefore, it is dogmatically stated as language can declare that repentance repentance is essential to salvation. Whoa! Jack Smack, he will liar. And that none can be saved apart from repentance. You see, when people come up and say, they say, they say I don't teach repentance. I teach a young repentance of sins. But you have to repent. And why is it repentance? Because it's built into faith. But repentance is part of salvation. You want me to read Jack Smack's comment again, people? That's why he's running to John. But the reason John is using faith all the time is because it's synonymous with repentance. Faith and repentance go together. They're synonyms. We need to not make a big fuss as to what repent means in a slavic sense, because it is not part of salvation. That's not what Schaefer teaches. That's not what Schaefer taught. He's putting up videos praising Schaefer. It is dogmatically, st dogmatically stated as language can declare that repentance is essential to salvation, and that none can be saved apart from repentance, can I be clear, people? He has the book. He has the systematic theology. Did he put that in his writings? No. No. He said salvation, repentance is not essential to salvation. Don't go in, directly against what Schaefer wrote. But is included in believing and could not be separated from it. That's how repentance is in the other, ver or the, other the, the other areas. When you believe, you have repented of your unbelief. And he goes, see, it's First Thessalonians. Let me see here. Uh, To believe on Christ is page 274. Let me see here. Um, let's see. It will be considered too by many who, who, the, who are amenable to the word of God that the essential preparation of heart which the Holy Spirit accomplishes in the unsaved to prepare them for the intelligent and voluntary acceptance of Christ as Savior as defined in John 16, 8-11 is not sorrow for sin. The unsaved who come under this divine influence are illuminated, given a clear understanding concerning but one sin, namely that they, they believe not on me. From the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course you know who that is. <laughs> That's the issue. No matter what the sins you did, the issue is that that's the issue that will keep you out of heaven. You haven't believed it. You haven't got your name in the book of life. 
To believe on Christ is, is one act, regardless of the manifold results which it secures. It is not turning from something to something. This is what he quotes in his book here. But rather turning from, rather turning to something from something. In this, if this terminology seems a mere play of words, it is discovered by more careful investigation that this is, uh, that this is a vital distinction. To turn from evil might easily be a complete act in itself, since the action can be terminated at that point. To turn to Christ as is a solitary act also, and the joining of these two separate acts corresponds to the, the notion that the two, act, the two acts, repentance and faith, are required for salvation. On the other hand, turning to Christ for more or other confidence is one act. And in, that one, and in that one act, repentance, which is a change of mind, is included. You get that, people? You get that. On the other hand, turning to Christ for more other confidences, dead works, Hebrews, Hebrews 6, dead works, whatever you're trusting for salvation, you turn from. But that's automatic, that's built in because you, change, you turn to Christ. Because you believe in Lord Jesus Christ, you have repented. You don't have to make it a separate act. And that one act, repentance, is, which is a change of mind, is included. And Zane Hodges even pointed out. Zane Hodges is a different view of it, but he, he recognized that this view of act of repentance is legitimate. Uh, the Apostle stresses this distinction in ac uh, accurate terms when he says to the Thessalonians, Ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.9 This text provides no comfort for those who will contend that people must first, in real contrition, there's they're buying down good people. There's JT. There's all these people telling you you've got to beg and plead God for God for, to, to save you. Your sin is prayer. Nonsense. Which might terminate at that point and afterwards as a second separate act turning to God. The tech rec text recognizes but one act. You turn to God from idols and that is the act of faith alone. So, when you turn, when you turn, when they turn to God, they, they turn to Christ and believe in Jesus Christ, they turn their backs on us. They, they, they turn, that's what the issue was. They turned, and that's what people said they were safe, saved. So he says, here's what he quotes on page 376. 376. He quotes that thing, on, uh, that issue on page from 376 to 377. And, uh, Let's see. On his, this is page 29 of his book. In like matter, the Gospel of John, which is written to present Christ as the object of faith unto, unto eternal life, does not once employ the word repentance. Similarly, the epistle to the Romans, which is a complete analysis of all that enters into the whole plan of salvation by grace, does not use the word repentance in connection with the saving of a soul, except in uh, Romans 2.4, where repentance is equiv equivalent to salvation itself. When the Apostle Paul and his companions Silas made reply to the jail concerning what he should, should be saved, they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, Acts 16.31. This reply is evident it fails to recognize the necessity of repentance in addition to believing. From this overwhelming mass of, mass of irrefutable evidence, it is clear that the New Testament does not impose repentance upon the unsaved as a condition of salvation, because it's built into the faith. The Gospel of John, but with the direct words from the lips of Christ, the Epistle of the Romans, which is the exhaustive treatment of the theme in question, the Apostle Paul, and the whole way of 150 New Testament passages, which are the total of the divine instruction. See why you have to compare Scripture to Scripture, people? It's not one single verse. Are incomplete and misleading. If repentance must be accorded a place separate from and independent of believing. Too many verses be contradicted then. See, Jack Smack think that's by not by having a single verse that helps that helps salvation alone, but it doesn't. We have 150 verses that prove salvation alone by comparing scripture and scripture and saying, well, if first shows up that appears to demand repentance, if it appears to demand repentance of sins, never says sins, but repentance, we go to the 150 verses. No, it doesn't say that. So we have to reconcile that one verse with the other verses. That's how you compare scripture and scripture, people. That's how. Teaches, teach. Mm. Not Jack Smack 77 and his bunch of lunatics. So he says here, the whole way of 150 New Testament passages which are total of divine instruction are incomplete misleading if repentance must be accorded 
a place separate from and independent of believing. No thoughtful person would attempt to defend such a notion against such odds. You see that? When a heretic puts up a single person first, like Acts 2.38 or Mark 16.16 uh, 16, 16, and be, you know, be baptized, right? Or Romans 10.13, right? Who said, Copan and shall be saved, right? You got all 150 verses that say no. But Jack Smack doesn't want you to write the 150 verses. He wants you to look at one single verse. Well, don't take, don't compare scripture to scripture because that might lead to heresy. No, we have the verses. They're the guys who always point out one verse out of context and trying to get people saved with a single verse. You moron. And those who have uh, th thus then taken doubtless are done so. And hey, it's this guy, you know, it's, uh, you get these guys, what, what about this one verse? What about the other verses? They just have done the same thing with eternal security. All the time. Well, what about this verse? What about, what about the other verses that give you eternal security? They never told you about Acts, Romans 838, 39. You know, when you go there, well, what about this? Can you separate from, uh, well, we don't want to talk about that. Let's go to this. No, no, let's talk about the security, eternal security verses. Not the obscure ones that appear to teach no eternal security. Like your branches being thrown into the fire if you know, you know, you know uh, John 15, 1. Well, the branches are, you know, look at the minute. Uh, what, since when did men throw anybody into hell? <laughs> Those are the verses. They went to obscure verses. The, the salvation talking about has uh, the, the uh, issue of the losses has a physical loss of life, or it has something to do with a like, figurative thing. We have nothing to do with eternal security. How do we know that? Because we have so many verses that teach eternal security. These morons think one verse can't tell you. Uh, we, one verse, we have to, we can't compare scripture to scripture with uh, soteriology because people, but heretics, no, we're just going to go by one verse. That's John Jack's Max 77's idiotic teaching, which shamefully rejected. He says we have 150 verses that teach salvation by faith alone. Jack Smack is going to bring it to a single, but we can't go to another verse. We can't compare scripture to scripture. Oh, those heretics will compare scripture and it will mislead people. Now, the responsibility of a teacher is to reconcile scriptures based on the clear scripture interprets more difficult scripture. Jack Smack 77 is not a teacher. Do you understand that? You take clear, clear scripture and then you interpret more obscure scripture by clear scripture. You don't take isolated scriptures and just blow off the rest of the verses. No thoughtful person, see, Jack Smack is not a thoughtful person, would attempt to defend such a notion against such odds. And that's the same thing with nutcases like Brian Dengler and his other JT and his other idiots preaching. We're trying to tell you you had to go beg God and plead with God and ask God and you go to, you know, some obscure in John Ford. Well, woman to well and Christ said if you'd ask. Get out of here. And John 10, 10, 13. <laughs> John 10, 13. What about John 10, 14? Oh, no, look at John 10, 14. Let's go John 10, 13. But a bunch of parrots. And those who have thus undertaken doubtless have done so without weighing the evidence. There you go, weighing the evidence and considering the untenable position which they assume. That's why you compare scripture to scripture. Now, what did he teach here on his thing here? Yeah. The Gospel by John, which is written... Now, see, this is how sloppy he is. He didn't put the rest in about the moments. When you write a, 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 a quote, people, and you're leaving out a section of the quote, he left out the issue what, what uh, 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 Schaefer said about Romans. He left that out. You, leave, you, when you want to quote a partial quote? This guy is dishonest. He's dishonest. You want to run to this guy. Like he's something. Let's see what he left out here. The Gospel of John, which is written to, to present Christ as the object of faith uh, unto eternal life, does not once apply the word repentance. In this, uh, in this matter, the Gospel of John, which is written by, to present Christ as the object of faith unto eternal life, does not once apply repentance. Okay? Similarly, he left that out. Now, when you're writing a book, there are punctuations. You have to put dot, 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 dot. Telling you something's left out of the quote. Something was left out of the quote, people, that he did not deliberately put in. He is a dishonest liar. 
No, no, dot, 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 dot. Now he's quoting. He's quoting directly from this book and he cites it. And yet he leaves out a section. Similarly, the Epistle to the Romans, which is a clear analysis of all that enters in the whole plan of salvation by grace. Do you see why he left that out? Do you see why he left the, the issue out? It's the book of Romans, which is a complete analysis of all that enters in the whole plan of salvation. does not use the word repentance in connection with the saving of a soul, except in 2.4, where repent, repentance is equivalent to salvation itself. He left it out. He left out here. Let me see here. What else did he leave out here? Uh, let's see here. Okay, he left out this also. When the Apostle Paul and his companion Silas may reply to the jail concerning what he should do to be saved, they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 This reply, it is evident, fails to recognize the necessity of repentance in addition to believing. From this overwhelming mass of irrefutable evidence, it is clear that the New Testament does not impose repentance upon the unsaved as a condition of salvation. He left all that section out. Then he starts with the Gospel of John with his direct words. Let's see, where does he start again? Let's see. He left this out too. Let me see here. The Gospel of John with direct words from the lips of Christ, the Epistle to the Romans, with the exhaustive treatments of the theme in question, the Apostle Paul, that's why he left it out. We don't talk about Paul. And his whole way of the 150 New Testament passages, which are the total of the divine instructions, are incomplete and misleading if, if repentance must be accorded a place separate from and independent, uh, uh, independent, of, independent of believing. That now he starts. He left out, basically... He left out a practically enti a whole entire paragraph, but that much words, people. That much words without telling you by by a a, a a grammatical expression of telling people that something is missing from the quote. This liar put in in a quote without telling you that 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 this is an incomplete quote. Because he's a liar and a deceiver. And they want to tell people that 150 out of 150 verses, you compare scripture to scripture, and the book of Romans gives a clear analysis of salvation. Oh, no. Then he's going to talk about here. So he says, no thought for a person, uh, let's see. No thought for a person who attempts to defend this. Let me see what he has there. Let me, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, no thought for a person who attempts to defend repentance as a condition of salvation. And he has a quote unquote. He has a in parenthesis there. You have to you have to put that as your own words. No thought for a person who attempts to defend such a notion against such odds. And see so when you quote something that you're putting words in to explain a quote, you gotta put that in parenthesis. You gotta put it in a say this is you know, from you. You're explaining something. This is you putting in a, 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 a your own words now. This isn't Chafer's words. You, you explain Chafer's words. Um, and those uh, those and those who have thus taken doubts have done so without weighing the evidence. Evidence of considering. So let's see here. Don't know what weighing the evidence. The evidence or considering the untenable position which assume that which they assume. Okay. So he's made two men. And he, he put in words that Schaefer and I have there, puts a quotation in order to explain something, which means you've got to put an ex explanation there uh, 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 that, uh, you know, explaining that, 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 that these are your words, not Schaefer's words. You explain what Schaefer's saying here. And he left out an entire section of the paragraph, not to, and not tell you about it, with any punctuation. That, that, that. Let's put three dots. Da, 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 da. That's what you get from the guy. That's what you get from the guy. The liar. So let me start and put this up. Amen. Thank you.